In this tutorial, we'll be covering uh, an enthalpy diagram and uh, covering what a, a value of negative enthalpy means versus a value of a positive enthalpy. And we'll be looking at it. I know we, we covered how that means uh, endo versus exothermic, um, but we'll be covering like what, what that actually means in terms of a chemical reaction. So first off is uh, uh, one one very brief background thing on the the first law so the first law as applied to chemistry is our definition of enthalpy which is delta h equals delta e the internal energy plus any p uh any pv work that it does um so note that if uh vf equals vi as is commonly the case like for example if you have a if you have like a process like a uh, precipitation reaction so let's say you add um ag and then you add some cl ions into here okay if you add these two together there's no there's no change in volume when these two react okay there's not going to be a change this won't like when this comes together it makes product um there there might be like a very little negligible a, a change in volume when the solid forms like very negligible so if we say the vf um or if like if some amount of heat is released when this happens as well then uh th this may the volume may change like like a, like a barely a fraction so we can a lot of times in chemistry especially in aqueous reactions where they're taking place in a solvent like water then um, we can many times say that these two are equal. So if these two are equal, then delta V is zero. So watch what happens if we plug in zero for this value. Um, so and in other words, another way to say this statement here is constant volume. So in other words, if so at constant volume, Uh, delta delta H enthalpy equals delta E the inter which is if you recall from our previous tutorial delta E is the uh, internal energy of the system okay which is related to all the potential energy plus any kinetic energy and potential is mainly uh, energy stored in the bonds and kinetic is any uh, motional energy that the molecules have Um, and okay, so and we could say this holds true uh, often in chemistry. Of course, there are many times where this does not hold true, where you have uh, lots of gases expanding, and then you would have a, a massive change in volume. So it, these are not like when I say often, don't get carried away. So, um, so delta H um, is a good. We could at least say it's a good approximation of internal energy, delta E. I'll just write it out to make you think of uh, the molecules and, and how they're uh, energetic or not energetic. So if you have, um, so a little little side note on delta E. So if you have like, um, if you have CH4, okay, versus let's say butane, okay, which one will have more potential energy? You can tell by looking at butane that it has many more bonds that can break okay so it has a, it has a lot more energy stored up in all these bonds here so in in terms of and it also has more rotational energy so all of these can spin okay all of these bonds these bonds can spin the whole thing can rotate so this is called rotational energy so this is going to have this is going to be more uh energetic than methane would so we we could say the internal energy of butane is greater than the internal energy of methane. 
So this is an this is going to be an important concept for uh, when we get to a, an energy diagram or an enthalpy diagram. Okay, so um, okay, on to the next slide. So enthalpy, enthalpy in a chemical reaction um, is the difference in enthalpy between the products and reactants. So there's there's a there's kind of an issue with we can't really just look at enthalpy by itself. We we always look at delta and delta. So we always look at the change in enthalpy. Um, so it's the difference between how much energy the reactants have and the and the products have. And sometimes this sometimes this result is a negative number. Okay, sometimes it's negative, and sometimes it's positive. Okay, so we'll we'll look and see like what's what's going on there. So first, uh, I'll explain it from the negative perspective. So if you have a combustion reaction. Um, and we have um, we have uh, butane uh, reacting with oxygen, and this is going to make CO2 plus H2O. And we know that this reaction is going to be exothermic; something's being burned, so it obviously is going to be releasing some heat. Um, Notice that this structure is a more I, I would consider it a complicated Lewis structure. There's there's multiple multiple bonds here, and then look at look at our uh, look at our products. These are these are really simple products. So this is usually when things are exothermic is when you have something that's complicated and high in energy, um, and then you have uh, your products are really, really simple. These are lower in energy. So look and see what happens here. So we're we're going to plug in a low number here and then a high number here for internal energy. Okay, and again, delta delta H or uh, enthalpy is a good approximation of uh, of internal energy. So look and see if we plug in a low number here and a high number here. Then our our result is going to be a negative number, which would which would be what we expect for a something being burned. So it's going to be releasing heat. Um, so this has when it's complicated, it has lots of enthalpy and therefore internal energy. And when it's simple, it's got low internal energy and enthalpy. Um, so we can make some conclusions here. If the enthalpy of your products is less than the enthalpy of your reactants, then the heat of reaction, the enthalpy of reaction, this value here, is negative. Um, all the excess energy is released as heat. Okay, and remember from our previous tutorial as well that this is actually um, can actually be measured by Q. So if you set up a calorimeter and burn this and then transfer all this heat energy into something else, we can apply the first law, put it in terms of this system, um, and then measure this value. So Q actually lets us measure it, okay, since Q at constant pressure is equal to the enthalpy. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next slide for uh, an enthalpy or energy diagram. Okay, so there's an equation that lets us allows us to solve for enthalpy. It's actually it's related to the the previous the previous equation. So it's um sigma or the sum of the mole amounts of the enthalpy of all the products under standard under standard state. That's what this means. So this is a topic we'll get into later. Uh, minus 
the sum of all the enthalpy of all the reactants. These are called heats of formation. But for the purposes of this slide, as long as we know that it's pro the difference in products and reactants, then uh, the rest of this should make sense. So if you have an uh, exothermic reaction, you have um, you could symbolize the uh, the change in, in enthalpy by using a, a diagram. These are called enthalpy diagrams. So on the y-axis, we have energy, which is closely related to H, enthalpy. Um, and then on the x-axis, we have the progress, progress of the reaction, or time. <clears throat> so typically, you'll see on exothermic reactions, the reactants are really high in energy. Okay, and the products are really low in energy. Okay, and when you go from here to here, usually there's a there's actually like a bump right here, and this is this is a whole another area. This this bump right here is an area of chemical kinetics. Why there there is like a bump right there? The reactants usually have to gain a little bit of activation energy, so that when you, we burn that butane in the previous slide. Um, you have to light it on fire first, so you have to like get it going. You have to give it a little boost. So that's because the molecules at the beginning they don't have enough enough uh, kinetic energy like slam into each other and start burning yet. So usually there's a little hump on these energy diagrams, okay? And then there goes like that. So this difference right here, okay. Um, so we could say the the reactants are high. In energy, and then the products are lower in energy. Okay, and this difference here from here to here, from there to there, this represents the heat that's released. This represents the excess energy, which is given off in the reaction. Okay, and you'll see that <clears throat> you'll see that delta H is negative because the enthalpy of the products is less than the enthalpy of the reactants. Okay, and then these are the other conclusions we can make. Heat is given off or released. Those are the two most common terms you'll see for an exothermic process. Um, and I'm using a red pen because to show that the surroundings in exothermic reactions, the surroundings get hot. Okay, so let's take a look at endothermic. Endothermic reactions. So we'll draw another diagram. Um, energy, there's enthalpy, okay, and uh, usually you have a, a low energy reactant, they're actually lower in energy than the products, okay, and then the products will be higher in energy, forgot to label my x-axis, this is the reaction progress or or time, okay, and so from here to here, heat has to go in, so this needs an input of heat. Okay, for these reactants to become these products, heat has to go in. Okay, so uh, this, the difference from here to here, 
Um, this is the heat energy required to uh, for this reaction <clears throat> for this reaction to happen. Okay, and then you'll notice that <clears throat> Delta H is positive. Delta H is positive because the uh, the enthalpy of the products is greater than the enthalpy of the reactants. Okay, and we say heat is absorbed or taken in. The two most common terms for endothermic reactions. And I'm using blue to represent that the surroundings get cold because, because heat is coming in from the outside surroundings to make it cold. <clears throat> 